don't select few that already initiated, <laughs> you should already know what this is. And uh, for those of you that aren't, just cheer. See, we're going to get to the other stuff in a minute, but what I'm always trying to get everybody to understand is everything is vibration. So, <laughs> I guess it ain't nothing else left to do. The box. already know who it is and uh y'all tuned in with priceless knowledge yourself and this right here <laughs> this ain't nothing but a constant grind <laughs> and uh hey man i ain't gonna waste anybody's time we're gonna get right into it because uh we got some work to put in today and in this case it's hard detailed work because this right here this is a little something, something about those people that have Saturn and Virgo in their NATO chart. And see, before I even go there, if you don't know my style, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tell you a little bit about Saturn. I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of the energy that comes along with it and how it might affect you. Then after that, we're going to talk a little bit about what the sign of Virgo is actually all about. And then we're going to bring it to a crescendo and eventually a climax because uh, that's what I do best. Yeah, that's my forte. And uh, you're looking at one of the coldest closers in the game if I could ever get myself started. <laughs> but we finna do it. Because when we talk about Saturn, I mean, <sighs> Daddy Saturn. If you didn't know by now, this is the resident disciplinarian or taskmaster of the Zodiac. And uh, anytime you fucking with Saturn, it ain't going to make shit easy at all. As a matter of fact, being the ruler of the sign of Capricorn in the 10th house of the astrological chart, it's all about taking the necessary steps and putting the work in if you ever want to see tangible results. And uh, it's kind of like that priceless message of Jesus Christ himself. When, <laughs> when Jupiter feeds you for a fish, it might bless you for a day. And that's cool. But Saturn, 
Saturn's going to put you through some shit that teaches you to fish and you'll never be hungry again. I don't think y'all hear me though. When I was a child and I thought like a child and I was embroiled in my childish ways. <laughs> oh, I had a fear of Saturn because Saturn represents hard work, hardships, discipline, mastery. And uh, my little fifth house Pisces moon wasn't trying to hear that, man. But my second house, Saturn and Sagittarius, had something serious to say about it. And uh, them two had a tango and then boom. Here's a diamond setting before you here today. Because uh <laughs> my journey, my Saturn shit is a spiritual quest. It's all about faith and works with Pisces and Saturn, with my moon and Saturn being square. And the loss of my mama facilitated a lot of this. But here I am, profiting from my spirituality. Now, in a couple of decades, I know I do have another Saturn return coming up, but that's all right. It might shake my faith, but I'll be okay because I value myself. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, y'all youngsters these days be talking about pressure. Oh, I'm pressure. This pressure. No, that ain't pressure. And you're not pressure. Saturn is pressure. And pressure will do two things. It's either going to bust your pipe or make a diamond out of you. And sometimes it'll do both. <laughs> Can you handle it? And Saturn rules over the 11th house to a lesser degree and a sign of Aquarius. And that says that it's okay to want to rule the world as long as you put the work in. And Saturn rules over time and all of its usefulness and all of its limitations. And when you look at that from a human aspect, that means it rules over age and old age and all the lessons that that can teach us. And wherever Saturn shows up in a chart, it shows where we feel restricted. It shows where we feel obligations. It shows where we see fears. It shows where we might be holding ourselves back a little bit. It shows where the universe might be holding us back a little bit so we can catch up on some karma. <laughs> and, uh, the sign placement of Saturn. This is going to show the, the energy that we have that's connected with feelings of obligation. And it's also going to show the energy that we're going to have to work just a little bit harder in order to be able to access. But once we get there, we can achieve mastery. And I mean mastery. I mean, like I said, look what I'm doing here with y'all today. And my Saturn is in Sagittarius. And I used to struggle from a lack of faith. Now I speak on my faith and <laughs> I do it to make money because it's in the second house. You feel me? You feel me? You need to pay attention to Saturn, man. And uh, when we see what house placement of Saturn, that shows the areas of life that we feel restricted in and where we're going to have to work a little bit harder in order to get the things that are coming to us. <laughs> For instance, my Saturn is in Sagittarius in the second house. You know, my money used to be fucked up. Fucked up. But when I started speaking my truth with y'all, that shit turned right around, man. And, uh, now, peace and change and swinging things. Yeah. <laughs> Just another young player having things, man. Yeah. That's me now. <laughs> and uh, when we see the aspects of Saturn, this is going to show the most direct involvement of other areas of life with feelings of responsibility. And, uh, <laughs> hey, man. When we're talking about Saturn, the last thing I always want to caution you about is every 28 to 32 years, Saturn transverses the whole zodiac and comes back to the sign it was in at the moment of your birth. And uh, that signifies that Saturn return. And uh, this is one of the most feared aspects in astrology because this signifies the beginning and ending of some karmic cycles. And usually at this time, you're going to see some pressure get <clears throat> ramped up or you might see it be released off you immediately because you already been on point. It's really up to you what happens, or maybe not. Maybe it's just up to the universe and you have to have faith like me. <laughs> Ain't that a cookie? And so, <laughs> y'all was like that. Mine was about learning how to take it out of my own hands. Give it to God. Speak my truth. So, that's what's up, man. Now, we talk about the sign of Virgo. This is the sixth sign of the zodiac. It rules over the sixth house. It's ruled by Mercury. It lords over the digestive system. It's symbolized by the Virgin. And its mantra is, I analyze. And uh, this is most definitely mutable Earth, y'all. And when it comes to Virgo, this energy is focused on the details. <laughs> the 
details, man. And the virgin likes to be exact. And it's really notorious for being extremely pitical. I mean, pitical, extremely <laughs> picky and critical. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, you know, the, the Virgo is really all about being of service to others more than anything else. And wherever it shows up in the chart, it really speaks to where we need to pay close attention to the details in order to be a, to the, in order to be of the best service to the universe and to ourself. Okay. And, you know, mutable urge is extremely hardworking energy, man. Period, man. And it's really tailor made for the job. And it, it's really all about helping out wherever it can. And the common traits that come along with this are industriousness and, you know, methodicalness, <laughs> efficiency, you know, the seek for perfection in the sense of duty that all of that bestows upon us. OK, this is about consistency. You feel me? And <laughs> hey, man, it's about the greater good of both ourselves and other. But. It's about doing it for real, not dreaming about it. That's the thing. This earth, it's about doing. Okay? And so, now you take in Saturn, and you put in Saturn in Virgo. I'm going to tell you now, man. It, it, this is actually one of the best placements for Saturn to work with. Because here you have those workaholics that have this certain panache for efficiency and being pragmatic and being punctual. <laughs> and, uh, hey, man, nobody's more goal or result oriented than these motherfuckers right here. Because wasting time is like a motherfucking crime to them. But there is a catch. There is a catch because they work so hard and they get so motherfucking focused on the minutia that sometimes depression can set in due to all that work and pressure of the daily grind. Plus, they have such a deep fear of the unknown that they just kind of create more and more detail and then become more and more analytical while vehemently trying to, you know, increase their technical proficiency in desperate attempts to push back the, the frontiers of the great expanse. <laughs> and, uh, hey, that's just something that's going to have to be worked on. And, uh, fortunately for them, nobody has a better work ethic, man. Cause when it all boils down to it, man, they just need to learn how to have more faith in life and avoid getting caught up in the endless dissecting. Cause once they do, once they do, man, all that creative insight can really then be focused and coalesced into one place where nobody, and I mean nobody, is more efficient than these folks and getting their job done regardless of any obstacles that might be encountered along the way. So, so yeah, man. And, uh, let me also say that with all this earth energy right here, <laughs> you know, trying new things will never be these folks cup of tea, y'all. It just won't be, man. You know, they're just cautious by nature, period. And, you know, most of them will never be comfortable being the center of attention either. OK, because they're just shy, too, man. And they worry a lot about everything. I mean, everything. So they struggle with keeping a tight grip on their emotion in times of trouble. So a lot of times they choose to just stick to their self. You feel me? And not only that, man. One of the hallmarks of this placement is also that tendency to just savagely, and I mean, <sighs> viciously criticize everybody for their mistakes if shit starts to go south. And uh they themselves ain't immune to it either, man, because that's actually who they're the hardest on, man. And a lot of the times, man, <laughs> hey, uh, their well-being just, just centers around them feeling useful. So if they ever get to a point where they aren't feeling useful or if if they feel like, you know, they're not able to get the job done, they can fall into these depressive states where they feel like they ain't shit. And then, you know, the crazy thing is if they can actually somehow manage to not take it to extremes, <laughs> These little periods of analysis and criticism, it could actually end up being very good for them in the long run because uh, accountability is always going to be an awesome cornerstone in building up a more solid future. You feel me? And uh, I will say this, though, because uh, when it comes to these people's intimate relationships, you know, that tendency to rationalize everything is definitely going to get in the way. It just is. And, you know, 
it's, it's just going to cause problems in developing anything meaningful because they always end up abandoning the emotional aspect, which, you know, that's not going to be fair to anybody involved and the other people in the relationship. They're eventually going to get tired of that shit when they're seeking intimacy. So <laughs> if anybody can take the time to bear with them or if they can just stick it out dolo until they're ready to do their thing, it'll help because with time, it's going to be able to help them realize that perfection is just not attainable. And that's what they're always seeking here. Perfection, man. Hell, perfection ain't even real when you're referring to humanity, man. <laughs> Period, man. It's just an ideal. And through working on that, they'll probably eventually be able to, you know, let out that true Virgo that's sitting there, man. That's really just all about really being of service to people and showing care in a real tangible way, man. And then they can work hard at that. Then they can work hard at that. And other than the intimate stuff, let me say this, man. Saturn is actually going to help these folks in almost every other way when it's in Virgo. Because this is a trine here. If you want to look at it from a planetary to a sign aspect, this works well together. Okay. Saturn rules Capricorn. This is Virgo. It's like a big brother, big, si little, big brother, little sister type thing, man. You know, this type of energy. It, it works well together. It harmonizes, man. And, hey, man, when it comes to the professional arena, man, <laughs> these folks are always going to excel because their work ethic is something that just can't go unnoticed. It's just something that can't go unnoticed. And, you know, because of their, their level of focus and because of their, their skill, because of their efficiency and, you know, that consistency that they have that can't be matched. Hey, it, it, it's damn near robotic how they can get shit done. And then when somebody higher up sees that, they're always going to be put in the position to be able to get shit done. So as long as they can get over the emotional turmoil or, you know, be able to establish a way to actually have some fucking feeling with this right here. <laughs> hey, they could go far, man. And uh, I didn't even mention right here the way that these folks right here kind of masterfully manipulate the details and make sense of the mundane like nobody else can. <laughs> like nobody else can, man. These are those people who make multitasking look like light work. I mean, light work. But on the other hand, they can also work so hard and work so much that, hey, they can add so much fucking pressure on themselves that it can really have a negative effect on their health with this being in Virgo, too, when I think about it. <laughs> For real, man. And, uh, hey, learning to take a break right here, that would probably be a big thing. <laughs> learning to take the time and work at giving yourself a break could mean everything. Because uh I'm telling you now, man, if this is your placement, hey, you're going to have to actively work at getting your own head out of your own ass or getting yourself out of your own head sometimes. Period. <laughs> Period, man. Okay? Because, uh, it ain't safe up there. It ain't safe up there. For instance, <laughs> Heath Ledger had Saturn in Virgo. And uh I don't want to see any of y'all go out like that. And that's why I'm here to talk to y'all here today, man. Okay? And I'm also here to remind you that just because you built like that, you don't have to build like that. And what I mean is we all have all this energy available to us. What you do with it is what you do. And even beyond that, it's not about what you do. It's about how you do it. And that's some priceless knowledge in itself. And this bit some priceless knowledge of self. Hey, I want to thank everybody for all the love and support, man. If y'all are interested in the astrological readings whatsoever, y'all should know what to do. But if not, you can either hit me up in the comments below, which isn't my preference, but I will see it. And then I will direct you to my email, which is Mr. Turner 1300 at gmail.com. And uh, this is the time that you should be hitting that like button because uh, I know I went in, man. And uh, I just appreciate everything, man. I love y'all. Right now, from the point I'm sitting, we still got this Mercury retrograde going on. Don't let it fuck you up, man. Remember that just because you built like that, you don't have to build like that. And uh, also remember that if y'all looking for any merch, get at me. But 
You can get all the merch you want, and I want to sell it to you. Just remember that. <laughs> oh, man. This type of swag that I got, it's got to be in you and not on you. So, uh, let me put it in you.